Hi, I'm Natalie Reed. And I'm Chris Wilkins. And today we're going to be talking about one of the recent uh, collaborations between the field and the lab on one of our most important features that we've excavated recently. If you've been keeping up with our videos at all, you know that for the past few years we've been excavating sections of what we've been calling the Zuniga Ditch, or Flag Ditch. This ditch was drawn on one John Smith map from 1608 that ended up in the possession of a Spanish spy, made it to Spanish court, and that's how we have a copy of it now. It has been in our collection of documents for a very long time that we've known about, but it wasn't until recently that we discovered that the flag-looking feature that projected off of the northern corner of the fort in the map was actually a real physical feature on the landscape. We found that out using GPR, and then we've excavated two small sections of the ditch along the flagpole area. Last year we excavated one near the governor's well, and then this past year we excavated one on the other side of the road. When excavating that section of the feature, I started to notice the natural soil layers you would expect, uh, most notably that orange subsoil. So that is the clay underneath of topsoil and ancient topsoil that you hit. And that's what most features are dug into. So once you find that orange clay, you know that you're done digging that feature. And at the very top, it was the normal orange color that you would expect. As you got down a little bit deeper, it transitioned to a mottled orange and yellowish grayish soil. And then once I got down to the bottom, it was not only the regular bright orange, it was also that grayish yellow and, strangely, a very thin brown that looked like you had almost sprinkled a bunch of iron on the soil. And this was something I had never seen before, and to my recollection, nobody else on the team had ever seen anything like that before, so I thought it would be a great idea to bring out a specialist, such as Dr. Chris Wilkins over here, to actually do some sort of chemical testing on the different kinds of subsoil to see if it means anything um, related to geology or human activity. As a senior conservator here at Jamestown, I'm responsible not only for the care of objects, but also for the analysis of objects. We use all different kinds of techniques, such as x-radiography, as you can see here behind me, but also elemental analysis, such as PXRF or LIBS. It was for this reason that when Natalie asked me to study this unusual finding, I was excited because it offered the, another opportunity to evaluate a unique feature in the field using our portable elemental analytical tools. So here's what we use. This is a portable x-ray fluorescence unit. Um, this shoots a uh, series of photons out of, the, out of the nose here into an object. It excites the electrons. They release photons themselves that come back into the detector. And they're, they're specific to each element. So we can determine every element that's in whatever it is that we're looking at with this. So using this machine, we're targeting the three different sections of subsoil that I noticed outside the ditch feature up top where it's that solid orange, then underneath where it's both orange and that mottled silvery yellow color, and then at the very bottom where you have the orange, the silvery yellow, and then also that sprinkling of dark brown everywhere. Absolutely. Cool. And can I show you the results? Sure. All right, well first what we have here are the semi-quantitative results. If you take a look at this, what I have found is that the differences in between the orange soils and the uh, gray soils is merely the amount of uh, um, iron that's in the soil. Um, we're going to come back to that a little bit later. The flex, those dark brown spots that you were seeing in the soil, well that was an iron manganese nodule. Um, and let me explain that to you. Or actually first, let me show you what I was seeing in the spectra themselves. Okay, if we're looking here at this particular section, this is your manganese peak. And we're noticing that for the red, which is the dark flex, we have a much higher peak for manganese than the other two. But it is, it, it is in the soil, it is in all the different soils. If we go to the next image of the spectra, here we're mainly looking at the iron. So there's the manganese again, you can see the red, the other two are almost invisible here. Uh, we are seeing a much greater peak of iron for the red. 
So that's telling me that those specks in the ground, those nodules, are iron manganese nodules. Now, how did they get there? I'm sure that's your question, right? All right. Well, first, let me show you this. Um, so here we have an image of the nodules. Um, not our image, but this is, a, this is from a, a case study, another report, another soil. These nodules tend to occur in soils that have been wet, high moisture content. And you tend to find it as you go down into the soil column, they tend to increase until you're right above the water level. And then once you hit that water level, they start to decrease going down into it. And the reason is because, well, if we take it back to the gray soils, the gray soils are soils that are deoxygenated. Um, you can actually have soluble iron in those soils. And when that gray soil hits the air and has ox access to oxygen for a very long time, it'll turn that soil to the, to the orange color that you're used to. Um, so a lot of times, if you stick a shovel into the ground, into glade soils, it will be nice solid gray. Give it a while, and then you'll start to see the oranges and the yellows, as well as gray and perhaps, perhaps these nodules. How did these nodules get here? That's all due to microbial action. Uh, we have anaerobic bacteria that's in the ground. Um, first, when the soil layers are laid down, you know, many millennia ago, that was well oxygenated soil. But then, as the millennia, as we, as we come closer to our period today, and we've had different stratigraphic layers laid on top, not necessarily human activity, but natural activity, whether it be wind-borne or water-borne deposits, uh, you, get, you get a capping uh, situation happening. The soils below still have oxygen, but that oxygen is being used up by the microbes and other processes that are happening in the ground. Eventually, all of that oxygen is used up. The anaerobic bacteria takes over and they need a way to breathe. And the way they do that is by taking iron out of the soil, iron and manganese actually out of the soil, and we call these uh, redoxomorphic features, these brown nodules, because there's actually an exchange of electrons. And when they redeposit these, the iron and the manganese into the ground, it's actually in a soluble form. And so it starts to float around, but it can, it can attract one another. And then as it hits the oxygen, and it's oxygenated again, it will actually re-precipitate into the ground as a nodule. So what you're seeing is biological activity in those nodules. And so it kind of makes sense that as you're closer to the surface, where there's more oxygen, you're gonna find less nodules. It also makes sense that as you go into the deeper water areas, the higher moisture, there's constantly water there, so it never really has a chance to re-precipitate, so you're gonna have less. It's really just right above that water table. So what I understand from all this is that we can safely say this was not human activity, causing all those little nodules to remain at the very bottom of the ditch. What we can say is that all of those little brown flecks are the result of anaerobic, so no oxygen necessary bacteria. When they're in the soil, that is sufficiently moist enough, say close to the water table. If they're living there, they don't use oxygen and instead they pull iron and manganese out of the soil, digest it, and then spit it back out. Basically, yes. Is that all right? So we've excavated a lot of soils that are close to the water table, particularly last year. We excavated a well, so we were actually going down into the water table and past it. But I have to wonder, why do these nodules show up here and this uh, ditch feature, but not anywhere else that we've seen? Any theories? I do have a theory. Uh, if you have moisture that's moving through the soil, uh, not the soil column, but the soil layer, it's going to wash those soluble uh, iron and manganese uh, elements, atoms, away. And so you're, you're not going to get a re-precipitation there. It's only going to occur at the boundaries of semi-permanent to permanent water features. So we're not talking hundreds of years, we're talking thousands of years. Um, and we basically have that with our, with our swamp. And I realize that that is relatively new in the geological time frame, but obviously it's new enough for this to be occurring, or old enough for this to be occurring. So that's my thinking with that. I hope you've enjoyed this video, where we have actually taken analysis into the field to look at anomalous features in an attempt to find out what they were. We'd like to thank our donors for making it possible for us 
to acquire and use these techniques for such adventures, for these analyses out in the field and certainly in the lab where we, where we use them nearly every day.